Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's excellent to have you here as always, and thank you for watching. I've got a fun one coming for you today. It's going to be some in-house testing, and it just so happens to be a perfect night to do that because it's raining cats and dogs outside. This one was generated off of a comment on the Facebook page of all places, but this one is specifically on thread lockers and which ones are the best to use for our particular purposes. There seems to be some misconception out there because, and I've seen this other places before, I like to use rock set. And rock set is often put on a pedestal as like this compound that's impossible to remove. And if you put that on your muzzle device, then it's permanently installed. And that is not the case. The difference is you don't take rock set off with heat. You use water, big difference. I prefer to use that compound, but I'm gonna see if we can prove ourselves wrong today because I have a plethora of different things to use. We're gonna be using good old fashioned red Loctite, green Vibratite, Permatex red, JB Weld red, rock set of course, and then I also have a control set up uh, with nothing as well. So that's how we're gonna kinda of do it. Now before we get started, we have to hear a word from our sponsor because hey, we gotta pay the bills, right? And that sponsor is Sonoran Desert Institute. Have you ever considered a career in the firearms industry? or wanted to learn more about a particular discipline as it relates to guns. Perhaps you're under intense pressure from your family to go to college, but you realize that's a really bad investment because the only things that you're good at are guns and basket weaving. If any of that is you, then a course of study at SDI might be right up your alley. What did you major in in school? Guns. Sonoran Desert Institute is a DEAC accredited online college focusing on programs and courses pertinent to firearms. So if you're into gun repair, ballistics, or learning about firearms, SDI might be something you wanna look into. They even have funding plans and payment options available for anybody who doesn't have a pile of money laying around, like most of us. So if you're interested, you can catch up with them at sdi.edu. Special thanks to SDI for making today's video possible. Now let's talk a little bit about the test matrix and kind of what we're doing. We're gonna be testing this in multiple phases, and for that I have several uppers in which I've cleaned the threads off to make sure there's no extra crap left in there, and that was actually a fairly intensive process, so just throwing that out there. This took actually several hours. I'll be using some of the brand spanking new Occam Defense Key Mount Vortex Pattern Flash Hider Mounts. The thing about Brian's company that I've learned over the years is they are QC monsters, and if there's anything that needs to be improved on the key, the key mount, excuse me, flash hider, they're gonna find it and they're gonna fix it. So anyway, more power to them. I'm glad that they got a contract for those things because uh, for the longest time, those things were just solid unobtainium. The first phase of the testing, I applied the compound and spun down the flash hider. I then torqued it to 20 foot pounds and let it dry for two days. The idea being to test how much torque resist each compound provides. I would have gone lower. The meter that I purchased was the lower meter as in it went lower on its lower end, but also lower on its higher end. The idea being that I wanted to be off the limit and the minimum limit is 15 foot pounds. So I've torqued them to 20 just to make sure we are up off that lower limit, which we'll get to here in a minute why that was actually, I don't want to say foresight, but worked out. This is the control. Red Loctite. JB Weld. Vibratite. Permatex. Really? Yeah. Rock set.
All right, so from that we have some numbers for you, and I'm gonna use my cheat sheet here just to make sure I get them right. Uh, these are gonna be rounded to the nearest pound, and it's gonna be in foot pounds. So uh, the control came in at 16 foot pounds. Uh, that's again, nothing on it except for torquing it and then untorquing it. Uh, the Loctite product, 31 foot pounds. The JB Weld, 30 foot pounds. Vibertite came in at 68, and the Permatech, 20. So basically nothing. And then Rockset came in at 59. Now, guys, <laughs> I'm sorry about the camera work on the Rockset. I didn't expect there to be that big of a problem. I had just done Vibertite, and I guess my stance was wrong or something like that, and my big meat hook got in the way. So I apologize for that, but I was looking right at the meter when it broke. 59 is the number that we're going to run with. So Vibertite did edge out Rockset for the number one spot in the ideal condition. So now we're going to move on to test two and see what happens when we add heat. I wanted to make a real quick note about the individual compounds in tandem with this testing. I also set out a few drops of each to kind of monitor how they dried and what they set up like. As of today, as of the filming of this video, five days later, all of them are still wet, except for Roxette. It seems to me that each of those compounds, except for Roxette, of course, requires some kind of friction to initiate polymerization. That is just what it is. Normally you smear that stuff on your thread, you start spinning your threads down and like the thing gets tighter as you start to screw the thing down because it's literally setting up as you're screwing. Again, I'm not really up on the chemistry. I don't really know a whole lot about how those things are formulated and what they're actually designed to do. I don't have the tech specs in front of me, but that's what seems to be going on because I can still moss and that stuff like literally right there, I can mess in it and get five days later. Anyway, all of the uppers were staged in this room sitting right next to that dehumidifier there that you can actually, now that I see it, I can see that you can see the hose. I let it run continuously. Instead of having to change the thing, I literally have it sitting on a 55 gallon drum <laughs> because I want it to be dry as the second test had the same initial parameters as the first, except for this time we're going to heat the devices to 400 degrees and see what happens. Here's a shot of the control being tested. It takes about one minute with this propane torch to get it up to temp. Vibertite. JB Weld. This one's a smoker. <laughs> and nothing. Good old fashioned red Loctite. This is me taking the temperature at varying distances to show that, it, like, I didn't, like, super cook these things. Here's if I let off, it'll hold the temperature. There's it underneath. Permatex.
Okay, recap from test two, guys. We just have two data points, really, from test two. And that is that the control, with nothing on it, came in at 20 pounds. And rock set plus heat equals 41 pounds. So this is what I was trying to avoid by not just screwing the thing down without any kind of torque whatsoever. I was trying to ensure that there was going to be something to look at. I was concerned that if we didn't have any torque on it, that these all these compounds were going to be off of something unreadable. Basically, what we can draw from this is those compounds that don't turn into crystals, like Roxet, and just turn into like a GAC that covers it and can be crystalline depending on how much heat is applied or not applied, those basically in this situation, once they got heated up, turned into lubricants that helped that thing spin right off. So we saw torque when we had the control and rock set, no torque required with all the other compounds. So that's why generally speaking, I gravitate towards rock set. But what does that mean in terms of real world applications? Well, let's go to the range to find out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. One ninety-eight. Three fourteen is what I get immediately following. So continuing with that trend, you'd exceed four hundred degrees after about halfway through the third magazine, probably. So as you guys can see, after just a couple magazines through that firearm, we were right at the operational parameters of our second test, which is basically what I was trying to convey to you guys. Why is this important? Well, this thing is expensive. Not all cans are expensive, but after you add the two hundred dollar tax stamp on it which I don't agree with, just throwing that out there. These things are all expensive once you do that and add 10 months of your life to it. This particular device is $1,200 MSRP. And if that alignment is off, as in it has backed itself off, that's a problem because it can cause accuracy problems and also damage the can. So some people might say, oh, well, you know, just use proper torque. The problem with proper torque is you are torquing this up against a shoulder and there's nothing there to really jam it up. And it's important that you don't use a jam nut or a crush washer on your suppressor mounts. I have a full video out on this. If you guys haven't seen it, it'll be linked in the description box down below. It's an imperative that you understand why you don't use those devices on your suppressor mounts. And even after you have properly mounted your suppressor mount or your direct thread suppressor, it's important that you run that alignment rod down the bore of the firearm and the suppressor to ensure that it's properly aligned because there are instances where sometimes that stuff can go awry even if you do everything right well actually if you do absolutely everything right you can't be wrong because you checked it with an alignment rod anyway i digress as of november 2021 until technology changes the proper way to mount a suppressor mount or a direct thread suppressor is to throw the crush washer jam nut away use shims to time breaks as necessary and apply seizing compound like rock set to the end of the thing and torque to proper torque. All three you'll notice are required. You can skip the timing of the break if you're using a flash hider or something like that because that doesn't matter nearly as much but if you're trying to time break you don't use a crush washer, use a series of shims to make sure that that is correct. If you look at them, you can tell that they are literally just strips of metal that were spun off of a CNC. Anyway, 
that's our look at thread lockers as far as these things are concerned. I hope that you learned something in today's video. If you didn't learn anything, then I'm sorry about you. But if you did or you enjoyed the video or found it interesting and informative, then please sound off in the comment section down below. Consider sharing the video around. And if you feel so inclined, then you can support the channel on Patreon and subscribe star. And you can see some people on screen doing that right now. All the people that really don't mind about being put on a domestic tourist watch list.